Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. Thank you for watching. First and foremost, as you can see, I've decided to uh, get some shirts out there. So if you're interested in buying a shirt, I'll have a link in the description. So that's something I've always wanted to do is have a shirt with a design on it. So if you want to support the channel, feel free. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about the IdeaPad S940. So previously, Lenovo shipped me a Origin Y740, which was an amazing laptop. But I'll be honest, it isn't quite a laptop I would buy if I was, it, you know, money no object is not necessarily what I would buy. I'm not a huge gamer. I tend to carry my laptops with me a lot. I work in IT, I travel a lot of different places, and I almost always have a laptop with me. And so having a laptop that is thinner, lighter, and more usable or more carryable is something that's more important to me and so that's why this is my daily driver my 25th anniversary edition and so when I pulled this laptop out of the box I was so excited this has a 14 inch screen exactly the same size of screen as my ThinkPad but just for size comparison look how much smaller this laptop is the S940 and also how much thinner this laptop is there is also a significant weight difference obviously because there's less to this laptop than there is to this laptop enough so that usually if a laptop's a few ounces lighter than the other you're not going to notice the difference when you're carrying it in a bag you will be able to tell the difference between these two systems both in weight and also just in the overall bulk that you're having to carry with you. So if you have to carry a lot of things with you, this is an excellent laptop. Now, there are some caveats with that. There's some, some drawbacks to having something so thin and light. This laptop, like Apple, and other high-end, super thin and light laptops, has gone the way of dongle life. This laptop only has, for expansion, three... USB type C ports. Two on the right hand side, one on the left, and the one on the left is the only one that can be used for charging. It does give you a headphone microphone jack, but that is it. There is no expansion, there's no SD card uh, reader, nothing. That's all you get out of the three um, USB type C's. Which, if you're not somebody who uses a lot of peripherals, if you have a Bluetooth mouse and you have, uh, even if you use an external keyboard but it's a Bluetooth keyboard or at home you have a, a USB Type-C dock, you know, something like that, that's probably not that big of a deal. But for me, unfortunately this did let me down because I went to do some work on my dad's car and I had to update his Maps application which required me to have an SD card slot. Now I ended up using my 25th anniversary laptop because it has an SD card slot on it. For this laptop, I'd have to use three separate adapters of, of what I have, because I don't have a USB Type-C to SD card. I had to use a USB Type-C to USB Type-A to a USB SD card reader, and then it was a micro SD card, so I had to use an adapter. So it was, it was a lot of adapters just to be able to update the maps for my dad's car. So for me, that's a hard pill to swallow, not having some of those features. I've gotten to the point where um, Ethernet is always faster, but it's not as necessary for my laptop, the one I personally use. Now my work one's a little bit different, but my personal use laptop, I almost never plug it into Ethernet unless I'm really doing something, and then I would use a dock for that. Same thing with external keyboards mice. If I'm going to be using them, I'm probably going to be using my docking station. but a full-size USB type A on here I think if they I think they could have done it I think they could have had a little bit of a bump out and swapped one of these type C's for a USB type A and I don't think it would detract from the laptop that significantly maybe but I, I that's a personal opinion it might detract from it but it would be nice. Or you're just going to have to accept if you buy this laptop that you're going to swap over. Now going back to things I love about this laptop is the screen. This laptop, oh, Windows Hello, 
It has Windows Hello, which I love. Let me turn the brightness up on it because it is down because it is on battery. This is the one with the 4K resolution. If you're looking at buying this laptop, buy it with this screen. I want to say it's like a hundred dollar upgrade. It does shorten your battery life because it's having to drive more pixels. And so the CPU, the GPU um, is going to have to work a little bit harder. There's more backlight, more elements to it. So it does reduce your, back, your battery life by a fair amount. However, this screen is gorgeous. It is probably one of the best screens I've seen on any device, period. It's bright, it's colorful, the resolution is amazing. Definitely worth the upgrade on it. Watching videos on this, any kind of multimedia is amazing. Now this does not have a dedicated graphics card. It does have an integrated graphics card. I went ahead and run a benchmark. We'll compare it against the 25th, just for kicks and giggles. And the integrated graphics is okay. They definitely have made improvements to the integrated graphics over previous generations of their core series processors. Definitely some steps up, for sure. So I was actually impressed with how well it did perform without a uh, dedicated graphics card especially running the 4K screen because obviously with a 4K screen, more pixels, it's going to have to work harder than on something with a lower resolution screen. So definitely love the screen. All right, so we're going to go ahead and compare benchmarks. We're going to go ahead and run the benchmark first and then we'll compare the results. First and foremost though, I want to show you just the difference. I purposely put the same background on these two laptops just to show you the color and uh, brightness difference between these two laptops. It is huge. Uh, I actually copied the background from this laptop to this laptop so I know it's exactly the same background and you can see the difference like look at the gear here and the gear here just how much brighter this laptop is. They're both at 100% brightness. Well, we're going to go ahead and run the benchmark. I'll speed this up so you don't have to sit through it. One thing you'll notice is on this laptop for whatever reason when it gets to the 3D test it does hit an error and I'm not quite sure why I reached out to um, the guys over at uh, Passmark but I haven't heard back from them yet at this time so if I get an answer I'll let you know otherwise um, it, it errors out at that point which is not something I've had with other laptops it's probably a driver issue but I did check drivers and it does have the current drivers on there so I'm sure in the next driver iteration it doesn't perform affect performance of the laptop overall so Let's go ahead and run these benchmarks. And we'll do three, two, one. And go.
All right, so here we go. I, I got a little bit closer and, and dimmed the brightness on this screen a little bit so you could hopefully see those numbers. I'll have to see how that turns out. But the overall score is actually pretty close. They're only about 200 points apart from, less than 200 points apart from each other. Uh, but the big difference between these two laptops is this laptop is, um, has a four core Core i7 with eight threads. This one has just a dual core Core i7 with uh, hyper threading, so it's four threads, so twice the CPU on this laptop. They both have 16 gigs of RAM, but this laptop, the S940, is soldered, and I don't know what the speed is off the top of my head, but it obviously is a faster memory. This one has uh, 16 gigs, but I'm sure it's a slower memory, so we'll have to take a look at that here in a little bit. Then, uh, obviously, the 25th anniversary has a GTX, I want to say it's a 940, so it has a dedicated graphics card, and you can tell that as it has nearly the twice the graphics score that the S940 does. And the disk mark is much faster on the S940, owing to the fact that it is a faster M.2 drive, even though they're the same size, it's a newer, faster drive. So <clears throat> it would be a lot closer score if the uh, T, uh, the 25th anniversary had that faster uh, memory and the faster storage. But definitely the CPU is much faster on the S940. So that's the result of the uh, performance testing. We'll go back to the rest of the video. The trackpad on this. I understand why they didn't include separate physical buttons, there just isn't enough room on the system. But despite that, the trackpad is actually excellent, and I think it's actually much better than the one on my ThinkPad. It is an excellent trackpad. I had no issues with it. I've been using this as my daily driver laptop for the last two and a half, almost three weeks, and I have had zero complaints about the trackpad. It feels great, it reacts great, it senses my fingers well. Going on to the keyboard, the keyboard layout, spot on. I love the keyboard layout. What I do not like is the travel on the keyboard. This is one of those things that because you have a thin and light laptop, they're just not going to be able to give you the travel on the keys that you could on a thicker laptop. It just, the space isn't there. And so if you do a ton of typing, I would recommend definitely checking one of these out. It took me a little bit of getting used to. I'm a pretty heavy typer. I, I, I push pretty hard on the keys. I do use a mechanical keyboard here at home, which you know, requires a fair amount of force, and so I had to learn to lighten up my typing a little bit on this laptop. Uh, it helped that the key placement is really good and familiar to me, being that I own several idea pads uh, of different um, generations and, and models, and also it's just an overall Lenovo layout for the keyboard. And so, travel okay is a bit a uh, bit short for me personally. Otherwise, the feel and the response is great. It's far above my Dell uh, laptop that I use for work. The keyboard on that is terrible. This is a much better keyboard, uh, despite the lack of travel in the keys. Uh, battery life on this laptop is, again, excellent. I could get between six and eight hours, depending on what I was doing on the laptop. So with the lower resolution screen, you definitely could go uh, significantly longer. Uh, according to Lenovo's website, the difference I think was about two to four hours of battery time difference. So uh, with me being able to get at least about six hours out of this, now obviously that's reducing brightness and putting in a few power saving. It, 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 you know, I was able to get at, at least six hours out of this laptop using it. The other thing that is huge, huge, huge on, huge on this laptop are the speakers. Lenovo did an amazing job with the sound quality of the speakers on this laptop. They need to put these into their ThinkPads and every other computer that they sell. These speakers are excellent and the sound processing of these speakers is excellent. Uh, I don't think I've had a laptop with better sounding speakers, period. They're that good. They sound just amazing. Now, obviously, you're not going to get a lot of bass out of these speakers. You're not going to. There just isn't the room to create the low notes. However, despite that, the sound has depth. It's, it has a quality. It, it, it is very clear. It's very crisp. It, it, I don't feel like I'm listening to laptop speakers. 
and I don't think I can pay them a better compliment, honestly. They are an excellent speaker. So if you're going to be using this for multimedia, probably one of the best multimedia laptops I could think of. If you're having to give a presentation, if you're watching movies, uh, if you are listening to music, anything like that, oh my goodness, the sound quality, between the sound quality and the, and the screen, you're going to get an excellent experience every single time. Backlight bleed. There's almost no backlight bleed on this laptop. Let me bring up uh, a background here for you. So it's kind of hard to see with all the light and everything in the camera. The camera, of course, adjusts. But there is no single spot on here that's brighter or dimmer than the rest. It's a very even coloring. It is not OLED, so obviously there is going to be backlight coming through. And so it's not black, it is kind of that bluish gray that you get from LED screens. But there's no, once again, no single point of brightness anywhere uh, on the screen. And it is, it looks great. Now for having such thin bezels, one of the things you'll notice right here is, sorry, I, I cleaned the laptop before I started this video. Of course it's covered in dust already. Uh, there's this little notch right here that bumps out. It doesn't impact the screen at all but this is where the web camera is and the IR sensor for the Windows Hello is found right here and I think it's a very elegant solution. It's not at the bottom of the screen like some of these are. They, they just bumped it up a little bit just enough to put the camera in there and I think that is an excellent placement for the web camera. Quality is okay. I, I don't do a whole lot of webcam uh, stuff. You know, it just, if you're going to have one, I think this is a great solution for it. And just, just going back to overall screen size, I just want to compare it once again to my ThinkPad here. You can just see the screen sizes are the same size. There just is no bezel around the screen at all. As far as opening the laptop, uh, you can do it one-handed. When I first got it, that was a bit stiff and wouldn't open with one hand, but the more I've had it, I don't feel like it's loosened up. Maybe it's just my technique has gotten better but you can open it with just one hand. This screen, despite being very glossy, is not a touch screen, which actually surprised me. I figured on all laptops of this price point, it's not a cheap laptop, uh, $1,600, $1,700, somewhere in there, depending on the sale or whatever. It is not a touch screen, and, and I thought just about every laptop in this price point would be. That's not a bad thing to me, I don't use touch screens. So it's not a detractor for me, but if you're looking for something that is a touch screen, I looked on their configurator, not an option. You can't order this with a touch screen at the point of recording this video. Now I had some questions about this laptop. Um, I did post a previous video where I actually opened up the laptop and showed you on the inside. The only thing swappable on this is the NVMe uh, storage. It, it's just a normal storage. You swap that out. M.2 slot, you can swap that out, nothing else is replaceable. So when you order this laptop, other than the memory, or the storage, excuse me, for the CPU, the memory, everything else, you want to make sure that you spec it the way you want because you're not going to be able to go back and add more memory later. Uh, the only thing that you can change out, again, is that storage, so keep that in mind. The other thing I was asked about is just overall build quality. It is a metal case. So you still have to be careful about any kind of sharp um, hits to it. It will ding it or scratch it or whatever. But as far as how it feels, it's very solidly built. It feels very good. It's not a terrible fingerprint magnet. I'm a, I don't know if I'm a greasy person or whatever, but I leave fingerprints. I mean, you look at this laptop that I've had, and I leave fingerprints on everything. And this will get fingerprints on it, but they don't show they don't look bad so I would definitely say as far as that goes it's a great laptop the keyboard feels very solid when you're typing on it there's not a lot of flex most of that flex is coming from the laptop it's sitting on there's not a lot of flex in the keyboard because there just ain't much there to flex the laptop itself there's no wiggle in it the screen when you're typing on it it, there's very little screen bounce that sometimes, especially with something that's a lot of screen to overall laptop that you get when you're typing, the screen will bounce. This has an, almost no wiggle when you're typing. 
which is excellent. So it's a very solidly built laptop, obviously, depending on how you travel, you wanna make sure you protect it. As far as expansion, again, you just have the three USB type C's. They are all three Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt ports. Uh, I do not have any kind of external graphics Thunderbolt device, so I can't tell you how it performs over that. If you're looking for a premium laptop, I, I would highly recommend this laptop without a shadow of a doubt. It is well built. I've had a pleasure using it. With a lot of laptops I review, I get them and I kind of make myself use them. This one, I didn't have to make myself use it. I easily grabbed for this computer every time I needed a laptop. When I, when I was going out, going to help a family member with something, I went on a short road trip and brought this with me so I could watch movies at the hotel. Having this up and be able to play some music or, or listen to some audiobooks through this, easy choice. Super easy choice every single time. The only problem I had again is with poor expansion and that's just my personal needs um, and I'm kind of a crazy person that way. So if you have any questions, I, I'll be able to have this laptop for about another week or so. So if you see this video in the next week or so from when it's released, ask those questions in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to uh, answer those. And I hope you have an amazing day.